Once upon a time, in the heart of Yoruba land, where drumming echoed through sun-drenched markets and masquerade spirits danced under the full moon, lived a people blessed and burdened by the presence of the celestial beings. Papa Sun, a colossus crowned with crackling flames, ruled the day. His gaze, a fiery blessing, brought life to the land, but his fiery touch could also scorch the earth turning rivers to steam and crops to brittle straw. Mama Moon, draped in a shimmering gown woven from moonlight, reigned over the night. Her gentle light, sometimes a full luminous orb, sometimes a crescent horn, bathed the land in a silvery glow. Yet, in the inconstant darkness, unseen creatures stirred, their howls echoing through the valleys, sending shivers down spines and keeping every fire burning brightly. King Olumide, a wise ruler with a heart as vast as the savannah, watched his people struggle. The once vibrant songs of the village marketplace had faded, replaced by the rasping coughs of those struggling to breathe the hot dry air. The men toiled under the relentless sun their skin cracking like sun-baked earth. Women huddled at night, fear etched on their faces, the flickering firelight unable to banish the shadows that danced across the walls. One day, under the ancient Iroko tree, its gnarled branches heavy with the weight of countless moons, King Olumide called a council. The elders, adorned with cowrie shells and polished beads, gathered anxiously, Young warriors, their muscles taut and eyes narrowed against the sun's glare, listened intently. The very air vibrated with the urgency of the king's voice. My people are withering, he boomed, his voice like a drumbeat echoing through the parched land. The days are furnaces, the nights suffocating voids. We cannot live like this. A hush fell over the crowd. Then, Eka, the village elder, her eyes clouded with age, but as sharp as a honed spear, stepped forward. She spoke in a voice that rustled like dry leaves, carrying the wisdom of countless moons. Great king, she said, bowing low, perhaps the problem lies not with the sun and moon themselves, but with their presence here. A gasp rippled through the crowd. The celestial beings were as much a part of their world as the whispering wind and the life-giving river. Could they truly contemplate changing the very rhythm of their existence? As Eka saw the doubt in their eyes, a twinkle of mischief lit them up. We don't need to banish them, your majesty, she continued. We need to find them a new home, a place where their power can bring balance, not suffering. Eka's words hung heavy in the air, a challenge both audacious and necessary. A murmur of disbelief rippled through the crowd. How could they, mere mortals, hope to move the sun and moon? Yet, beneath the fear, a flicker of hope ignited. King Olumide, his gaze fixed on Eka, stroked his beard thoughtfully. Eka, he finally rumbled, his voice heavy with both doubt and determination. Tell us your plan. Eka, her eyes gleaming with the wisdom of countless moons, stepped forward. She spoke of a legendary place, beyond the horizon, where the sky met the endless ocean. It was said to be a realm of perpetual twilight, a place where the sun and moon could reside in perfect harmony. But reaching this mythical land would be no easy feat. Thus began a period of fervent planning and construction. Smiths hammered night and day, shaping iron into intricate gears and levers. Weavers toiled tirelessly, crafting ropes as thick as baobab trunks from the strongest vines. Artists, guided by the whispers of ancient spirits, painted the contraptions with vibrant colors and sacred symbols. Weeks turned into months, and slowly, under the watchful gaze of Ika, a magnificent structure took shape, a colossal catapult, its wooden arm stretching towards the heavens like a mythical beast reaching for the stars. The day of the launch arrived, a day etched in the memories of the people of Yoruba land forever. 
the sky crackled with anticipation as the villagers gathered, their faces a mixture of fear and hope. Chants resonated through the village, invoking the blessings of the ancestors. With a collective heave and a thunderous roar that shook the very earth, the villagers unleashed their creation. Papa Sun, caught off guard by the sudden surge of power, soared through the sky, leaving a trail of golden fire that painted the clouds in hues of orange and red. A collective gasp of awe escaped the crowd as Papa Sun reached his new home, a land bathed in a gentle, perpetual twilight. The scorching heat receded, replaced by a warmth that nourished the land. But their work wasn't finished. The night approached, and with it, the absence of Mama Moon. Following the same plan, they built a smaller catapult, adorned with luminous shells and feathers that mimicked the moon's glow. With a collective prayer, they launched Mama Moon into the night sky. As Mama Moon settled into her new home, the land bathed in a cool silvery light. The unseen creatures no longer howled, replaced by the gentle chirping of crickets. A wave of relief washed over the people of Yoruba land. They had achieved the seemingly impossible, forging a new balance with the celestial beings. News of their feats spread far and wide, a testament to their ingenuity and unwavering spirit. The legend of the people who dared to move the sun and moon became a beacon of hope, inspiring generations to come, to face challenges with courage and creativity. The land of Yoruba land, once scorched by the sun and haunted by darkness, flourished under the gentle rhythm of the newly established celestial dance. <laughs>